Welcome back to Essentials Explained. Today we'll dive into the Excel and talk tactically about how to utilize a pivot table to summarize your data. If you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's dive into it. So now that we understand the basics of how a pivot table works, let's get into the Excel to talk tactically about how to use these. So easiest way to insert these will be with shortcuts. Alt N V T will let you insert a pivot table anywhere. So if I drag date revenue, I won't even use a category here. You can see we already have our pivot table. One thing to note, I did not select all my data. So you can select all your data. Alt N V T will give you the same exact thing as just selecting one single cell, right? These are the same or I can just select any cell in my table and Alt and VT will pull up the same range. Excel's smart enough to figure that out and to say, you actually want to reference all of the data that you have in your table, not just the one value you selected. That is with a shortcut. You can also go up to the toolbar and hit insert pivot table from table or range. Again, selected all of your table and range. I've been putting these on new worksheets. If you want to, you can also put a pivot table on an existing worksheet. So if I want to go to sheet 10, I want to put it in cell A16 and hit enter. I have made the same exact pivot table. If instead of creating a new one every single time, you can also just copy these. So if I copy this, you can see I have the same exact table. If I want to prove this, I can go up to pivot table, analyze, change data source, raw data A1 through K1217. I can go back here, pivot table analyze, change data source, same range address. Great, so that's basics of inserting a pivot table. I'm just gonna clear a couple of these just to give myself some room and now we'll talk about how to actually toggle them. So what we've already done is put our date in our columns and our value in our value section. Let's add a category to our rows. So let's look at paint color. We probably want to make these numbers a little bit easier to read. I personally like commas. So a couple ways to do this, either select your cells and use this top button and you can make these currency. You can make these percentages. You can change the decimal points. That's a pretty easy way to do it. Another way to do that could be going into your values section, value field settings, number format will let you do that. So you can do a custom number format. You could just do a simple number format. You could do a currency. So just another way to set that up that will make your life a little bit easier. I'm just gonna make this actually a number. I don't want decimal places, but I want the thousand separator. So we have our numbers set up. We have our field list. Let's go into this design tab and talk about how you can toggle through your pivot table to view your data in different ways. So starting on the far left, let's look at the subtotals. So this isn't going to do anything because I don't have a subtotal because I don't have a subcategory. So whenever you have a top level category, this is all the data that Excel can really show you. If I drag in another bucket, so let's drag in the price bucket. Now what Excel can do is it can show you the revenue for the basic sales of blue paint the premium sales of blue paint and the total sales of blue paint. So this is a subtotal. It's showed for the total of your top level grouping, which is your paint color. You can either show subtotals at the bottom of the group as they are right now. You can show them at the top of your group as it looks in this instance, or you cannot show them at all. Preference, I like them at the bottom of the group. I think it looks a little bit cleaner and is easier for me to understand. So grand totals. So you can either have grand totals completely off or you can have them completely on or some combination of each. So I'm just gonna have them on just to show you what this is doing. So this is the grand total for your rows. It is 3,005 is the sum of all your different values. And if you fill this, this down, you can see this is column is simply just showing me the total of all my rows. So the sales of red paint premium from 2020 to year to date 2022. Same thing with my grand total in my columns. It is the sum of my 2020 revenue. So if I subtract 
the sum of all my different subtotals, this will be my grand total, right? So my personal preference here is to leave them on, particularly for a data set like this, just for your columns. And the reason for that is I don't find the grand totals for your rows that helpful. Maybe you can see that, oh, for these two and a half years, we want to know yellow paint was the biggest seller, somewhat helpful. But I think you can also see that just looking on it on a year to year basis. And so I like to just have this on for my columns because I think there is value in being able to easily see what is the trend year to year. So I want to know what's been the trend in my total revenue from 2020 to 2022. I don't really care about my grand total of these different categories. So that's grand totals. Let's talk about report layout. So right now this is in compact form. So if I just go compact form, it's going to put it in its default section, which has subtotals on the top. If I go to outline form, it's going to shift this pricing category over one column. So if I want to give myself a little bit more room and I want to you know, view this in a format that's a little bit more spaced out, I can do that with the outline form. Personal preference, tabular form is very helpful if you want to create data sets. So what this will do is it will actually remove that top blank row. So again, I go back to outline form. It's saved this blank row. Basic is offset by one row. If I go to tabular form, you can now see subtotals are at the bottom and my basic, my first subcategory is on the same row as my paint color is my top level category. And if I go back and turn off subtotals, maybe what I actually want to do is I want to repeat all item labels. So I actually want blue paint to fill up every instance or I cannot repeat and only show up in the top. And so if I repeat, what this will let me do is use a concatenate formula to quickly build a unique lookup column. So for instance, if I wanted to use a sum if, or I want to use an index match, now what I have is I have a unique lookup column for each one of my different categories. So I have a blue paint basic, blue paint premium, red paint basic, and I could use this to query off of to build a table. So helpful to understand the different report layouts so that you can toggle your data into different ways. We will talk about this again later in the course. So blank rows, what do blank rows do? Just inserts a blank row in between your different sections. So if I go back to compact form, let's say I want to drop a subtotal at the bottom of the group because we're fine getting rid of this data. So with it, and we can toggle between, do we want these all stacked up or do we want a space? I like a little bit of space. I think it looks clean, but personal preference here. So far, we've only talked about one value, which has been revenue. Let's say I wanted to understand some of the trends at maybe a price volume perspective. So I want to understand what's driving my change in revenue. Is it a change in quantity or a change in price? Am I selling more at the same price or am I selling the same quantity at a higher average selling price? So if I drag my quantity into the field list and it auto populates and I'll actually just drag in my price as well. So you can see this is super hard to read. Again, easiest way to fix this, let's drag our sigma values above our dates. And what this will give us is a much easier view to see. We have all of our revenue grouped together, all of our quantity, all of our price. Problem is this price column doesn't make much sense. We don't care about the sum of price. What we want to understand is the average price. So if I click on this down caret value field settings, this will pull up how I can summarize this value field. So instead of viewing a sum, Maybe I want to look at an average. And so this average will basically tell me what is the straight line average of each one of my categories. And so it takes the total amount of blue paint premium, takes this price column and takes the average. And so if you want to click in and see exactly what each one of your cells is referring to, just as I did, you can double click on any of these cells. So I just clicked on 2021. And if you see, I'm just blow this up. You can see this is all of the blue paint that is sold in 2021. And what this is going to do, it's going to pull in a average of this price category. And so this is 17.42. If I want to double check that, I can subtract from my pivot table and you can see that is zero. Great. So. All we've done here is take a straight line average, which is actually not what we want. That isn't the right way to set this up. What we want is 
a weighted average based on the sum of our revenue and the sum of our quantity. So the way you'll want to solve this problem is by using a calculated field. So if I go up here and pivot table analyze fields, items, and sets, calculated field, I can add a field called average selling price. And let's say I go to my formula and I can either double click revenue or what I can also do is just use this insert field option. And let's say I want revenue divided by quantity and which will give us our average selling price. So I'm just going to add this, hit OK. And then Excel is smart enough to figure out, you probably want to add that to your value section. If I make this a little bit easier to read, you can pretty quickly see these aren't exactly the same. And so you're going to want to make sure you use weighted averages. This is always best practice. I would not use a straight line average like this pretty much ever. So I'm going to remove the average of price here. And for some of you asking, you know, why did you use a calculated field? Why couldn't you just come here and do equals revenue divided by quantity, carry that over, drag that down. You totally could. And it's the same exact answer, right? If you look across these rows and I could just do a quick check just to, to prove it. All of these are the same. I'm getting a little bit div zeros, but all of my real values are the same. Nothing has changed. The reason I want to do that is because it lets me toggle my pivot table and keep that field in place. So for instance, if I want to, maybe instead of looking at the price bucket, if I wanted to look at maybe the ownership category underneath the paint color on top of the paint color, I still have this field here. And so this average selling price stays in my pivot table and manipulates to the structure. So right, if I even wanted to add in maybe another subcategory, you can see this gets really hard to read, but the average selling price is calculated for each one of these different areas. And again, if you want to view what data is in each of these sets, so this would be corporate blue paint basic sold in 2020. I can just double click here and it will pull up the four instances those sales occurred in 2020. Pretty simple. So I'm going to remove a lot of the value fields and I will actually remove our categories as well. So you see, I'm just going down here, removing the other way you can do that. Let's say you wanted to do a slightly different way. You can also go up here and click on these items and they will remove them for you. I don't have a strong preference on that. Again, whatever you want to use. Here we have our basic table. Number one thing to talk about when it comes to pivot tables is they won't automatically refresh unless you refresh them. So if you're used to using Excel, you're used to having your formulas update when your data changes. So if I go into, and maybe just to make this really simple, what I'll do is I'll remove this date and maybe I'll even, I'll just leave this paint color. I think that's fine. And so if I go into this Excel and let's say in my raw data, I'm just going to make this really obvious. I'll delete a lot of my data. If I go back here, nothing has changed. And so if you're used to using formulas that automatically update, you're probably wondering why this hasn't changed. It's because you haven't refreshed your pivot table. It, pivot tables need to be refreshed to understand that it needs to look at new data because otherwise it would be constantly refreshing and it would make your workbook really, really slow. Easiest way to do that, right click, hit refresh. And now you can see what we've had is this pivot table's updated and this is our new data set. You can go into our pivot table, analyze, change data sorts. It's the same, but it's a lot of different blank rows. The other way to refresh your pivot tables is click on your pivot table, go to pivot table, analyze. You have this refresh button, or you can use refresh all. So if you have a sheet that has 30 different pivot tables, you will need to hit refresh all and it will refresh all of your pivot tables. I'm going to control Z myself. So I save myself from destroying my file. I'll go back. I am just going to refresh this to make sure I have my latest. One last thing to talk about refreshing your pivot tables does not refresh your data source. This is very, very important. And sorry if I'm beating a dead horse, but you need to be very careful when working with pivot tables, you're referring to your latest data and the right data source. Make sure you understand this and make sure you know that your data is referring to your latest data source, particularly whenever you update or change a file. Let me show you how this works. So if I went in and let's say someone said, oh, we actually got this new data 
and I'm just going to drop it at the bottom of my file. And so if I go back to my pivot table, what I can see is I'll just refresh this and it should work. And it won't work because you haven't changed your data source. So in pivot table analyze, change data source. I can scroll down and if you see this little dashed, uh, I think it's a green line you can see what this is referring to. So it's still cell A1 through K1217. So I'm not capturing any of this new data I pasted underneath. If I wanna update this, I can just click anywhere in the table, Control A will select my range. If I hit enter, I've updated my data source, but Excel has not refreshed the pivot table. So you're probably wondering, well, why is that? Just go up here, hit refresh, and now you can see we have this new data set going to control Z to save myself and not mess up my raw data. But last point is be very, very careful that you have refreshed your pivot tables. You have referred to the right data source and ultimately are using a connection that is representing all of your data you want to show. Be careful with this. This is the easiest way to mess them up and it has happened to a lot of people. So I am really going to stress, make sure you understand that your pivot tables are referring to the right data source and are refreshed. If you're interested in more examples of how to properly use a pivot table and specifically how to use them to derive key insights from your data, please check out the next video in our series linked here. Otherwise, thank you for watching and please comment any questions or feedback you have below.